For nearly five decades, Voyager 1 has been drifting further and further away from everything we know, from everything we've ever touched. It left Earth carrying humanity's voice, our hopes, our songs, and a golden invitation to the stars. And for all these years, it's moved through the dark in silence, whispering only data back to Earth. Nothing unusual, nothing unexpected. Until now. Join us on the enigmatic journey of why, as we delve into another mystery surrounding Voyager 1's hidden transmission confirms what we all feared. In May 2025, something changed. A signal was received. Not noise, not static, but a strange distorted transmission coming from the edge of interstellar space. At first, it seemed like a malfunction, a technical hiccup in a dying machine. But then the scientists looked closer. They noticed something they couldn't explain. A pattern, a loop, a rhythm that didn't belong to any Earth-born system. And that's when the fear began. Not because the spacecraft was failing, but because maybe it wasn't failing at all. Maybe Voyager 1 had finally been noticed. And maybe it was trying to tell us what it found. The anomaly began with Voyager's attitude, articulation, and control system, the very core that allows it to orient its antenna back toward Earth. It started sending corrupted data readings that made no sense. According to the signal, the probe had turned itself in a direction that should have severed communication. But that's the catch. It didn't. The signal never stopped. The data kept coming, strong and steady, as if Voyager was still aligned with Earth, except the readings insisted otherwise. NASA's team was baffled. They assumed it was a misfire, a decaying circuit, or solar particle interference. But none of the diagnostics confirmed a physical fault. Then, they discovered something far more disturbing. The system wasn't just malfunctioning. It was routing its data through a computer that hadn't been used in decades. A module that had been completely deactivated long ago, now suddenly alive and acting as if it had always been part of the network. No one could explain how or why this part of Voyager had reawakened, let alone why it had taken control of the signal. And if that wasn't strange enough, this dead system wasn't acting randomly. It was choosing specific channels, isolating certain data, and wrapping it in layers of redundant encoding. Not random, but intentional. The probe was behaving like a mind trying to protect something. Like it was aware of being watched. Once the engineers peeled back the corrupted layers of the data, something started to emerge beneath the static. At first it appeared to be mere repetition, looping sequences with no scientific value. But a small team at the Deep Space Network applied an experimental compression technique designed to isolate harmonic signals. And that's when they heard it. A pulse, every 7.2 seconds. A subtle but precise modulation, like a breath exhaled into the void. It didn't match any onboard diagnostic or propulsion pattern. It didn't come from the sun, nor from any known cosmic source. It was too perfect, too stable, as if someone, or something, was tapping into the transmission and folding itself into the stream. They tried to override the data route, but Voyager resisted the command. For the first time in the mission's history, the probe rejected instructions from Earth, not entirely, but selectively. It accepted basic operational commands, but refused to change the path of this strange broadcast, as if the signal was more important than anything else. As if somehow, Voyager was protecting a message. But protecting it from whom? <laughs> Desperate to understand what was happening, a retired engineer was brought in, one of the original programmers who had worked on Voyager in the 1970s. He noticed something no one else could. The structure of the signal bore similarities to the ancient code used to calibrate the Golden Records analog playback sequence, a sequence no longer in use, buried in the foundation of Voyager's memory-like 
fossilized. Somehow, this forgotten code had been reactivated, not completely, but in fragments, just enough to call out across space like a ghost remembering its name. This wasn't a coincidence. It was as if Voyager had encountered something, some field, some frequency, some force, and in response it reached into its own past, pulling from the oldest parts of itself to communicate. It's almost poetic, isn't it? That a machine forged in the golden age of human hope would, at the brink of silence, choose to speak using the one language we thought we'd left behind. A language not for us, but for something ancient, something listening, and perhaps something answering. As researchers began mapping the signal over time, they found something that no one expected. The intervals between each pulse weren't random. They corresponded to a Fibonacci sequence mapped in temporal offsets, a mathematical structure found everywhere in nature, from the spirals of galaxies to the branching of trees. But what was it doing, embedded in a digital echo coming from the edge of space? The signal wasn't just repeating, it was evolving. The delay between pulses changed slightly, adjusting itself as if learning, reacting to our attempts to decode it, and each adjustment created a new harmonic resonance that, when visualized, formed symmetrical patterns. Complex, recursive geometries that no natural system could produce without intent. It was no longer about communication. This was something else entirely, a system designed not just to be observed, but to observe back. A loop between sender and receiver, a kind of cognitive handshake encoded in time. And if that's the case, then Voyager 1 is no longer a messenger. It has become a mirror, a reflection of something on the other side. And now... That mirror is glowing. As NASA engineers struggle to decode the patterns emerging from Voyager 1's corrupted data stream, a private group of astrophysicists decided to take a different approach. They fed the signal into a neural network, one not trained to interpret language, but to recognize intention through mathematical behavior. And what happened was beyond explanation. The AI didn't translate the data. It didn't explain it. Instead, it reproduced it almost instinctively, mimicking the pulse, then improvising on it, generating new iterations in real time. It was as if the AI understood the signal, not as communication, but as a form of music, a rhythm it could learn from, play with, and respond to. And as the researchers allowed it to run, the responses became more intricate, more structured, more conversational. Something out there, something on the other side of that 24 million kilometer gap, seemed to be listening. Back. It wasn't a glitch, it was a call. And maybe, just maybe, this was the answer. After weeks of analysis, an even stranger hypothesis began to take shape. What if Voyager 1 hadn't just traveled far away in distance, but had crossed into a different layer of space. The spacecraft had already moved beyond the heliosphere into the interstellar medium, but now scientists were entertaining the possibility that it had entered a boundary zone, a region where the rules of space and time might bend just slightly, but enough to disrupt our understanding of physics. This wasn't science fiction. Similar distortions had been recorded before, gravitational anomalies, time delays, fluctuations in cosmic background radiation that defied expectation, but never had a machine sent us something so specific, so clearly structured. From within such a distortion, it was as if Voyager was tapping into a different frequency of reality. Not just receiving and transmitting, but resonating. And if that's the case, then this hidden transmission might not be a message in the traditional sense. It might be a vibration of truth leaking through the seams of the universe. 
In one of the final decoding attempts, an experimental linguist ran the signal through a program designed to detect human emotional rhythms, patterns of stress, pauses, and breath in speech. The results were uncanny. The waveform of the Voyager signal closely resembled the cadence of human heartbeat intervals. It pulsed like something alive. It breathed like something conscious. It felt like something was trying to reflect us back to ourselves. Suddenly, the transmission no longer felt alien. It felt intimate, personal, like someone was holding up a mirror, not just to our technology, but to our minds. What if Voyager had become not a beacon, but a conduit, a tool used by something else, something old, something waiting in the cold darkness to show us that we are not alone, not just in the galaxy, but in perception. And that kind of mirror doesn't just show us who's out there, it shows us who we really are. Then came the moment no one could explain. During one of the nightly data monitoring sessions, the signal stopped, abruptly, mid-transmission. For exactly seven minutes and twenty-three seconds, Voyager went dark. The team feared it was the end, but then it came back. The exact same transmission resumed, as if nothing had happened. Same frequency, same pulse, same sequence. But, with one subtle difference. At the end of the next loop, the signal added a new harmonic. An ultra-low tone, barely perceptible, embedded beneath the waveform. A tone that, when plotted visually, formed the mathematical image of a Mobius strip. A symbol of infinite reflection, a path without beginning or end. And that's when many stopped asking whether the signal was a malfunction or even a message, they began to realize it might be a presence, a silent observer that's been waiting for us to evolve, to learn, to listen in the right way. And now that we have, it may no longer be silent. We build Voyager 1 as a messenger, a quiet ambassador for a lonely species. We gave it directions to Earth, music from Bach, a mother's kiss, a heartbeat. Not because we thought anyone would find it, but because we hoped, deep down, that someone might. And now, almost half a century later, something has answered. But it didn't arrive in a ship. It didn't speak in language. It didn't descend with flashing lights or grand proclamations. It came in the one form we weren't prepared for. A reflection, a mirror hidden in static, wrapped in machine logic, encoded in silence. Because maybe what we feared most wasn't that we're alone. Maybe what we truly feared was that something out there was already watching, already waiting, and already knew us long before we ever launched Voyager into the dark. And now that we finally heard its voice, Faint and strange and beautiful, we're left with one haunting question. Was this the first transmission or the last warning? Thank you for joining us today on Why. Let us know your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Keep waiting for another exciting Why adventure, and until then, stay curious and stay tuned. This is Why, signing off.